Greetings everyone and welcome. If this is the first time you're joining me, I'm Dr. Corey Stern and this is my channel, Take Control of Your Health. And if you've watched before, welcome back. If you haven't seen my previous videos, please make sure to watch them because I truly uh, believe that all the information that I'm sharing with you is of equal importance. And my purpose here is one thing and one thing only, and that is to help you to be healthier, to um, be able to live a healthy, productive life, and to be happy. One of the things I see happens with people who are nutritionally deficient, who are uh, putting a lot of poisons in their body and on their body, and exposing themselves to all kinds of different poisons is that they have a lot more difficulty handling life. They have difficulty handling stress. And I don't know if you've been noticing, but I've been noticing um, in this current environment, which is very stressful and there's a lot of tension going on in the world right now, people are starting to lose it. People are becoming irrational. And one of the contributing factors to not being able to handle stress is being nutritionally deficient and being toxic. So when you are, are not nutritionally deficient and you're avoiding toxins, life is easier. Okay, I, have, I actually have a very stressful life. This has been a particularly busy week and it was really hard for me to find time to do this video today. I was determined to do it. This is actually the fifth time I'm recording this video um, because of stupid technical difficulties and I'm so bad with that stuff. I will get better at it. I am a little better at it now than I was, but <sighs> anyway, but here I am. So I hope that you have been listening to the other information I've been sharing and that you have subscribed to the channel. So I have a lot more views on my videos than I have subscribers. So please make sure to hit the subscribe button and then you'll see a little bell. And if you hit the bell and select all, you'll get notifications when my videos are uploaded so that you don't miss anything. And I would ver very much also appreciate that if you are benefiting from this information that you hit the like button. And then lastly, if you know somebody that you think would benefit, if you know somebody that you think needs to hear this, please share this video with them. My only purpose in doing that is to do my part to contribute to saving the world, okay? Because if we don't change something, if we don't do something about it, things are only going to get worse. And I don't want you to be a victim of what bad people are doing to our food supply and to the, to the way that we're being poisoned on a daily basis. So today's topic is organic food, is it really worth your money? And I get asked this question a lot. And it's a fair question, okay? Especially if you don't have a lot of, you know, extra income. Uh, my viewpoint about, about spending money on food is that what you're actually spending money on is your body and your health. You're investing money into your body. So for me, it's a priority. I don't, there's nothing more important to me. I would rather spend money on good quality, uh, food and other items that touch me or go into you know my body one way or the other um, than I would on a vacation. So I know organic food is a little more expensive and there are actually some solutions for that as well. Um, but let me talk to you about what it means to be organic, the definition of organic. And when we're talking about it, I'm really referring to organic the definition of organic in the United States because some different countries have different criteria. It's probably slightly different, but I don't know the criteria in any other country but the U.S. So in the U.S., in order to be considered organic, first of all, you cannot use synthetic pesticides or any other sides. So the word side, C-I-D-E, means kill, right? Like homicide. Um, so 
herbicides, fungicides, none of those can be synthetic. And they cannot be planting GMO seeds. So for anyone that doesn't know, GMO means genetically modified organism and it just basically means that they're altering the DNA of the seed. So that itself is a problem um, because we don't really know what the effects of eating altered DNA are, is going to have on humans. We're, we're seeing some health problems which we think are being traced to uh, GM, GMOs. But here's the other problem. One of the purposes of GMOs is that um, they are resistant to Roundup. Roundup is an herbicide. It kills weeds. And so uh, Roundup does not harm crops. It just kills the weeds. However, Roundup itself is extremely toxic. It's one of the most toxic chemicals on the planet. And it is a known carcinogen. It is banned in many other countries but we are eating it, we are um, uh, exposed to it, we are um, inhaling it on a regular basis. Um, the other thing about um, GMOs is that they actually produce their own pesticides. So there's actually pesticide inside the food. Ew. So yeah. Um, also to be considered organic, uh, the, the farmer cannot use synthetic fertilizer like uh, petroleum-based fertilizer or sewage sludge-based fertilizer. So yeah, if you eat commercial foods, you are eating petroleum and sewer sludge. Okay, so that's another reason for me not to eat it. Now, in terms of, so that's, that's regarding planting crops. In terms of livestock, in order to be considered organic, and um, I just, I have notes behind the camera and that's why I keep looking up in case it looks weird that my eyes are going like this. Uh, for livestock, they have to have access to outdoors. They have to be fed organic food. Um, they can't be pumped up with antibiotics or hormones, which causes huge problems in the human population that eats animals that are pumped up with uh, antibiotics and hormones. And that's like, that should be a whole other video which I will talk about um, uh, some other time. So uh, I just, you know, what I wanna say about that, I wanna say that um, Roundup and GMOs and the hormone that's used in animals have all been created by the same company, the same evil company that appears to be hell-bent on killing us, causing cancer, creating disease in our bodies, and that is Bayer Monsanto. Okay, and there's going to be one other chemical I mentioned later that they also created. So we have to do a whole video just on Bayer Monsanto and all the stuff that they've poisoned the planet with. and and your body. But getting back to animals, so access to outdoors, organic food, no antibiotics or growth hormones, and they have to, uh, they cannot be fed animal byproducts. Now, organic farms will use natural fertilizer like manure or compost, and for weed control, they will hand weed or um, till or mulch um, and then pest control is by birds and insects and and or traps and and naturally derived pesticides. One of the cool things though, if you have animals uh, on an organic farm, right? So the animals are contributing to the to the insect control. So for example, you have chickens which are, uh, what we call pasture raised chickens, right? They're roaming around outside and they're um, eating off the ground. And by the way, if you listening to this, if you are a farmer, you have any experience with this, I'm sure you can explain it a lot better. Um, I grew up in a city. I am a Brooklyn girl. I've never lived anywhere but a city. It's not that I've never been on a farm. I have been on farms, but I don't have any experience with farming. So 
all the information I'm giving you is what I've learned um, in in the um, over the years that I've been doing this this particular job, natural health and natural food. So, but the idea of chickens roaming around, eating off the ground, they're eating insects, right? So that helps with pest control. Um, and uh, animals, you know, the, on a, organic farms, they have to have clean housing. Um, they have to have rotational grazing. So, you know, the basic premise there is if you're, if you eat animals, healthy animals produce a healthy food for you to eat. Healthy, healthy, happy chickens produce healthy eggs. So it is much better to eat an egg from a chicken that's been pasture raised and walking around and eating off the ground, you know, uh, eating insects off the ground. That's, that's what chickens are supposed to do. Um, you know, I have patients, kids, but even adults that have no idea where their food comes from. Um, they don't, they don't, they don't know any of this. You know, egg yolks are actually supposed to be orange. I took a trip to Australia a few years ago and I had to take photos of my eggs because they were completely different color when the chickens are eating food that chickens are supposed to eat. The eggs look different than the eggs that I buy in stores here. Um, I don't actually buy my eggs in stores anymore. I do buy them off a of farm. I'll mention a little bit about that later. But um, uh, cows are supposed to eat grass. When cows eat grass and they're treated properly, they're raised well, they're outdoors, um, they're, not a, they're not in fear all the time, the meat they produce is healthy. So a lot of people have false data about, oh, you know, meat is bad for you. Um, it's that's not necessarily true. Okay? It's not necessarily true. Well, I don't want to get into a conversation right now about vegan versus carnivore. Um, humans are omnivores. I understand. I, I'm an, a tremendous animal lover, and you know I do have some issues with eating animal, but that's that's a whole other topic. I'm just letting you know that if you if you eat animal they should be healthy animals raised on an organic farm. So organic farming is much better for the environment. Um, it is less toxic. It is more nutrient dense. The soils are more nutrient dense, um, the way the soil is handled. And where do foods get their nutri nutrition from? From the soil. So ultimately, um, you know, I mean, if it tasted good, I guess you could just eat dirt and then you could eat organic dirt. You can get your nutrition from there. But um, the way that it works is you eat food grown in the soil and then you're also eating animals that are eating food that's grown in the soil. So for example, um, you can't digest grass. Um, cows have four stomachs. They can digest grass. You can't digest grass, but grass has a lot of uh, nutrition in it if, if it's grown on an organic farm. So then you eat the uh, the animal that ate the grass, and you get the benefit of that of that nutrient dense grass. So some of the problems that the use of Roundup uh, and pesticides have caused, besides the fact that they're carcinogenic and they're poisoning us, is that they've created superbugs and super weeds that no longer uh, respond to those particular toxins. So then farmers have to use even stronger toxins. And one of the worst uh, toxins that is used to um, kill, uh, it's, it's a pesticide, is called, I'm gonna have to read it off the paper because it's a really long word, 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid. And that is a component of the chemical known as Agent Orange, which as I'm sure many of you know, caused extremely horrible health problems for Vietnam vets. It was being used in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. And many, many people got very sick from it. A lot of vets are still sick from it. And guess what company created Agent Orange? Yes, you're right. 
they're Monsanto. At the time it was only Monsanto, but it doesn't matter. They are evil and they are poisoning us. So most of the uh, crops grown in this country are GMO. So many of them are GMO. Like It's very hard to find corn in the United States that that's not GMO. And the problem with that is that corn is then used in many other processed foods, right? So a lot of breakfast cereals are made out of corn. Your corn flakes, your you know, Special K, so many of them are corn-based. And so you're eating GMOs in your breakfast cereal if you eat that stuff and you're not really thinking about that necessarily. And then things like that are sweetened with corn syrup or high fructose corn syrup. So, so many things are sweetened with that. We talked a little bit about that in one of the previous videos, but you know, soda sweetened with high fructose corn syrup. So you're drinking GMOs, which means you're drinking pesticides. And, um, uh, things like uh, pancake syrup, you know, is high fructose corn syrup that is artificially colored and flavored. So many other things that have GMOs in them. And the other crops that are mostly GMO are soy soybeans, alfalfa, um, uh, uh, squash, zucchini, papaya, and canola. So canola, uh, a lot of people think canola oil is better than other oils. It's not. I have to have a whole video on fat. Fat is not bad for you, but bad fat is bad for you, and canola is not good for you. So don't use canola oil. On another video, I will tell you what are the best oils to use and the best fats to eat. Um, also, because soy is mostly GMO, if you see soy lecithin as an ingredient in food, and it's widely used in many foods, that is also GMO. So I want to give you a list of vegetables and fruits that you should never ever eat unless they're organic. These are fruits and vegetables that just suck in um, pesticides. Um, apples, sweet bell peppers, cucumbers, celery, potatoes, grapes, cherry tomatoes, kale and collard greens, summer squash, nectarines, peaches, spinach, strawberries, and hot peppers. Okay, so don't ever ever eat those unless they're organic. Now, there are some fruits and vegetables that are technically okay to eat non-organic, like mangoes and um, asparagus, and there's a few others, avocados. You know, I personally, I don't eat any fruits and vegetables that aren't organic. I just, I just don't, I don't trust, I don't trust it. Um, but you can go on the website of the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org, and get these lists. They update these lists on a regular basis. So if you really have to make some difficult choices about what to eat organic and what not to eat organic, that's a good source of information. I'll put a link um, on this video. And there are ways of finding organic foods that are a little bit less expensive so, um, for example, uh, going to a farmer's market or if you're in an area where there are local organic farms, um, that's the best thing to do and you support your local farmer. It is more expensive to grow organic food and that is why it costs more money. There's also something called a CSA, which is a cooperative that you um, you give them a certain amount of money, it's a farm, an organic farm, and then they deliver, uh, usually on a weekly basis, whatever seasonal fruits and vegetables are growing on that farm. So um, I can also put some links for that in this video. I belong to a an Amish farm, it's $20 a year to be a member, and I can order anything I want from them. They have wonderful food and I get that on a regular basis. They have the best eggs. They have soy and corn-free eggs. So even organic chickens are fed um, soy and corn. It's, it's non-GMO, but it's still soy and corn. I don't necessarily want that in my body. So the, these are all the things that I can find out from the farmer what they're feeding the chickens, and that's, that's a wonderful thing if you can know your farmer and know your farm and know where your food is coming from. 
So I really hope this is, was helpful. I know this video is a little bit blurry. I don't know exactly why. I'm sorry about that. But you don't really need to look at me. You can just listen to the information. <laughs> and um, I am hoping that uh, you really benefited from this information. And I will be back again in a week or so with some more of these types of topics, please, in the comments if there's something specific you'd like to hear about. I'd love to hear from you. I love your feedback. I do read all your comments, and I always try to respond. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day or night, and we will see you again very soon.